That's right, today we are talking about bobbers, the best bobbers for the situation. I got a few different brands in here and I'm gonna walk through why I would use different brands. The audio is probably bad there. I'm gonna walk through why I'm using different brands for different types of situations. Uh, let's get into it. Welcome back to the 30 day video challenge. I'm cranking them out this month of September. This is probably the bobber you see me use the most. This little, it looks like a spring bobber. It is not just a spring bobber. It is a three in one. I will show you how it works here. It's got these two notches. See these two notches? There's one right here and then one below it. The notch closest to the bottom of the stem is a slip bobber notch. And you see how the spring doesn't fully enclose all the way down to the bottom of the stem? That allows the line to slide through there. The, uh, the notch closest to kind of the middle part of the bobber here, that is fully enclosed by the spring and that spring will grab the line and make it a fixed bobber uh, if you are fishing pretty shallow water. It also has a, a grommet in the middle. You can run a line through the middle of the bobber right there. I can't tell if that's focused on it or not, but Typically, I do not run the line through the middle of these style of bobbers because they have a plastic grommet. And the reason for that is I typically fish with this setup right here. This is an eight foot ACC, six or eight pound monofilament. Whenever you're using monofilament line and you're trying to run the line through a plastic grommet or the center of the bobber is made of plastic, when you do set the hook quite a bit on fish, you'll actually tear up the edge of that plastic and it could cut your line. So this is actually how I run you can see, I just got it set up right there. This is typically how I run it. Just clipped on like that. Again, eight foot rod, six pound or eight pound monofilament. This is just a straight jig setup, but you could also run a split shot Aberdeen hook with a live minnow setup. I've done it with this style before. Works really great. Uh, the advantage to this, if your line gets tangled, all you have to do, just unclip it and then you can clip it back up once you get the knot out or whatever you need to do. Um, if you're using live bait and you wanna go for a little bit bigger of a live bait and you love using braid specifically, I know there's guys that strictly use braid for slip bobbers and then they run a fluorocarbon or monofilament leader about, I don't know, three, four feet after the braid. You want something that has a metal grommet. Something like this, this is a fill wobble bobber. Uh, this is more of a lot of the walleye guys. This is pretty beat up, but a lot of the walleye guys up north, this is the style of bobber they will use. Cool thing about these, if you notice on where it says fill, it also says the weight recommendation. So this one says an eighth ounce. So you could run a, let's say an eighth ounce split shot with an Aberdeen hook and a live minnow. That'd probably work for this style of setup. These are great because it's got the metal grommet. Braid won't cut into these. Um, and they're pretty easy to slide through. If you're, if you're using braid, you kind of want a shorter stem and a stiffer cylinder so you can actually put the braid through. Um, if you have trouble with that, tie the braid onto like monofilament or fluorocarbon, feed it through first, and then you can clip off that monofilament or fluorocarbon and you got your braid sliding through the middle of the grommet. But uh, this is the style I would use for more of a live bait rig, your bigger chubs, uh, sucker minnows, Typically it's like a bass walleye type of thing, but if you are fishing for crappie and some big crappie down south, maybe you want to run with something like this. So that is uh, bobber style number two. Now if you want a little bit thinner of a profile, uh, this is made by Northland Tackle. This guy right here, this is more of your true uh, bobber and stem style slip bobber. It is weighted, but if you notice, it does have the metal grommet on the top. Um, this is more of your true style slip bobber, right? It's the metal grommet on the top. You can run braid, mono, fluorocarbon right through it. I haven't fished a ton with just a weighted bobber like this. Sometimes with crappie fishing, the bite is, is a negative bite. It's not that they're, I guess, passive. Sometimes they're just super aggressive. They grab the minnow and run up the water column with it. And when you have a weighted bobber like that, you're not gonna be able to see when that negative bite happens. If it's not weighted, what you'll see the bobber do is actually just go sideways like this. It'll start to turn in the water and that's how you know you got a, you got a bite. It won't always go right down into the water, but uh, weighted bobbers, 
I, again, I haven't had a ton of experience with them. I just think for crappie fishing, probably not the best thing, but I do like the fact that it has a, I think that's a brass uh, grommet right there. So if you do run braid, monofilament, fluorocarbon, it is not gonna cut the actual grommet, not like these plastics. So when it comes to, when it comes to deeper shallow water situations and why I would fish something with an inline versus a clip-on, if I'm fishing super deep water, uh, 20, 25 foot, and I've learned this from experience, you want something that goes straight through the middle of the grommet. You want a metal grommet like this, or even these bigger wobble bobbers. The actual grommet size is really large on these. And so that line just slides right through it and it gets down to that 20, 25 foot. Typically this happens in the fall or like pre, like a early pre-spawn phase of these crappie. And so I'll, I'll have bobbers like this. The problems with the spring type, sometimes that line just takes forever to go through that little notch. And so these I would recommend if you're fishing like 15 foot or shallower, the three and the rod and bob three and ones. If you're fishing 15, 20, 25 foot, you know, that deeper range, I'd probably recommend more of an inline bobber because that line is going to slide through faster, in my experience, and get down to where those fish are sitting. He puts more crappie in the boat. Let's talk about these spring style bobbers. I, I got to use these down on Lake Fork a couple years ago. This is actually a big one. This is more of a, yeah, this is more of like a bass or walleye or even probably a pike. But they make micro spring bobbers like this. It's just a sensitivity thing. So. The, the reason these spraying bobbers exist is because when that fish slowly takes the minnow, they're not feeling that full weight of the bobber as it's a, basically a big buoy pulling down in the water. They're just feeling this slow tension. And by the time they get to right about here, you can see that fish has got it and you can set the hook on that fish. I've tried it. It does work on crappie when they're more aggressive. If they're super sensitive, it seems like it, the bite is really hard to tell because this bobber has a weight on it. You guys can see the bottom. Let me pull that out. This bobber actually has a weight on it right there. So this just runs through, uh, let's see if I can get it. it, runs through the middle of the grommet like that. These are plastic. Not really what I like, but um, I don't know if they make these spring styles with metal grommets, but it's got that little weight there. And again, I'm not really a fan of that if the crappie are not biting. Uh, the way that they should. If they just take the minnow, run straight down the water column with it, you will have no problem with bites and they they won't feel a huge bobber trying to get pulled down. But with something like this, it's gonna be really hard to see that negative bite when it happens. And let's see my last one here. Where is it? Here we go. This one's pretty beat up because I've used it a bunch. This is something I would use in the springtime. These are cigar style floats. And all you do is you basically pull the, the little pegs out, you run the line through. Actually, it's got a, it should have a notch in there. No, this one doesn't. Some of them have a little notch. You can actually just slide the line through on the side. But this one, you have to run it right through the middle of the grommets. And then put that little black peg in there to set your depth. These are great if you're fishing uh, springtime crappie, crappie on their beds. You don't want to spook them too much and you don't really need, you know, you don't really need something like this when you're casting in two, three, four feet of water. You want something that's going to support probably a 32nd or 16th ounce jig and these will do it. But you don't want something when it hits the water, it spooks them right away because again, you're fishing real shallow. This is bed fishing. This is definitely something I would use for when I'm bed fishing or fishing up shallow. Small little float, doesn't make a big splash when you cast it. Highly recommend that for springtime fishing. So those are basically the four bobber setups that I typically use. Again, eight foot casting rod or eight foot spinning rod that ACC Crappie Sticks makes. The eight foot is great because you can bomb a slip bobber setup out there. And it's also great because you can still pitch it. You know, it's, it's not a 10 foot, but it's not a six foot. If you had a six foot rod, you might not get the leverage to launch this thing if you need to cast you know, 70, 80, 100 feet away from the boat. And with a 10 foot rod, it might be hard to just kind of pitch it around if you're only fishing shallow water crappie and you're just pitching it around 15, 20 feet away from the boat. So I highly recommend the eight footer. I use a 1000 size uh, Viper X reel. 
If you're doing a lot of casting, upsize to a 2000, because if you use that rubber bobber stop on these smaller reels, it will actually get caught in the spool. So if you do a bunch of casting, you're casting 60, 70, 80 feet away from the boat, go with a uh, 2000 size reel, that bobber stop won't get caught as much. Um, but six pound or possibly eight pound test is typically what I use. I know some of you guys use braid all the time. This will still work with braid. Um, and then you can use either a live minnow setup or I just got this little 1 16th ounce jig and a plastic. But there are my bobber setups that I like to use and why I like to use them in different situations. Let me know in the comment section if you use a different bobber setup for a different situation. Um, if you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below. Or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck the rest of the season. I'm going to keep it coming with the 30-day challenge. See you in the next one. Thank you.